Welcome to Inspire Campfire, a podcast where ordinary people tell their stories of extraordinary adventure. These are campfire stories meant to inspire the rest of us to light the fire within, get outside, follow our dreams, and return to tell our own stories. Ready? Let's strike the match. Welcome to the show. I am your host, Scott Wurzbacher, and today we're going to take the concept of work hard, play hard to a whole new level of possible. Our guest is Michelle Mills, a real estate broker from Bend, Oregon, who has prioritized travel and figured out how to systematically take off three to four months every year and has done so for the past 10 years. She's a lifelong Oregonian and loves exploring her home state by horse, by motorcycle, by bicycle, and even running with her dog. But when she's not at home, she's generally somewhere overseas exploring the world for long stretches at a time. Now, as a fellow realtor, I want to know how she does it. And today, that's what she is here to share with us. Michelle, welcome to the campfire. Hi there. Nice to see everybody. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to have this conversation with you, Michelle. If we can, let's just start with a little bit of background of of you and life in Oregon and a little bit about your your business and tell us about Michelle. All right, I'm Michelle Mills. Uh, I live in one of the most beautiful places on the planet, uh, Bend, Oregon. We've got uh, the Deschutes River flowing through our town. We've got mountains shimmering in the background. Uh, everywhere you go out your front door is really like a playground. So we're, we're super fortunate to have trees and, and rivers and mountains just surrounding where we live. Um, I've been selling real estate for 22 years and I love it. I eat, breathe, live it when, uh, when, I'm, when I'm not doing my other fun place things. Um, and gosh, I have lived in Oregon my whole life. My family actually came on the Oregon Trail. We homesteaded in Eugene, Oregon. We still have part of our family bean farm in uh, in Eugene. And uh, I've made my home and definitely call home here in, in Bend, Oregon. I love it. Well, um, you know, fun fact, I think I might have shared this with you once before, but 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 for listeners, I have a I had a stint in U- Eugene, Oregon. Um, don't remember it, but when I was a kid, I lived there for I guess a couple of years with with my family before we moved back to the east. So um wish I knew you had a bean farm there. Maybe I would have <laughs> had a chance to check it out. But uh, but yeah, so Michelle, you and I, we first met um from a real estate standpoint. We we're in a kind of a panel together and we were you know, just getting to know each other. And I think the thing that just really just inspired me as a fellow business owner was, you know, I love adventure and I love to be able to take these epic adventures and I know the planning and 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 what goes into it. And, you know, my family and I have, have started leveling up. First, it was one week, two weeks. You know, last summer we did a month and then comes along Michelle Mills and she's she's knocking out four months a year consistently. And it's just a, it's a huge inspiration to know like what's possible. And, and I just would love to talk about how you do it. Well, you know, the, the funny thing, I mean, people ask that and they think, oh gosh, either you came from privilege or how do you do this? And, and the fact is I came from a small town of like 3000 people, my family, you know, very modest means and and really, here's the secret. Are you ready, Scott? The secret yes. is buy the plane ticket. That's all you have to do. That's it. If you buy a plane ticket, you end up going. You know, it's it's that's the the hardest step for you to make is to make the decision. And that decision, you're going. If you buy the plane ticket to go someplace, everything else will fall into place. And, and you talk about this planning. I have to say, I'm a little loose on the planning. I honestly like maybe open the guidebook when I get on the plane on my way to the place that uh, I'm headed to and say, I, I've learned that you should maybe book your first night. Uh, but besides that, I never book anything more than my first night. And it is amazing. You know, the world just opens up. It works out. You know, you flow with it. You meet people. You you end up going on these incredible adventures. You talk to one traveler that's been to one place and it talks about how beautiful it is. And, you know, next thing you know, that's, that's where you're headed. I've always felt like I have 
a treasure map that I'm not sure where I got it, but it's it's somewhere in my in my heart and soul and mind that uh, is all these incredible destinations uh, that I get to visit. So I, I oh. typically pick a, a new place um, every time I go. I rarely go back to the same place twice. And uh, I've been to 53 different countries and uh, will continue. My, my goal is to always keep as many countries as I am old. So I think wow. I'm, just, I'm a little bit ahead of, of my age right now, uh, but plan on keeping that, that uh, going. What, a, what an awesome goal. I love that. Now, you said something that really resonated with me because part of the reason that I started this podcast was to talk to people about that voice inside that calls to adventure. And you just called it a treasure map in your heart. I love that. So I want to, there's so much I want to talk about. I want to talk about the destinations, some of your favorite places, but let's, there's, there's going to be a lot of adventure on this call. Let's go straight to that, that treasure map and that place in your heart. Can you, can you talk about like what that is, where you got it? What does it feel like? Uh, you know, it, it's, uh, it's probably something that is hard to explain except for to probably all the other folks that, that love adventure and have that sense of, of wanderlust, but it always feels like my next trip just presents itself. Mm. I don't go searching. I don't plan. Maybe it's a, a comment. Uh, while I was visiting Australia, someone told me that Mozambique was one of the most beautiful coastlines in the world. And so just different travelers uh, sitting around and sharing places that they, they dream of. And then it gets you know, somewhere back in the, the corner part of your brain that, wow, okay, I think I want to, that, that's an adventure I want to do. Um, but I think just an openness of, of what, what's the next adventure and, and you'll laugh at me, but sometimes it's, there's, there's a little app travel zoo and I'm not, I'm not promoting them, but yeah. they have specials and every now and again, that's how I ended up in Vietnam. I was like $625 to go to Vietnam. I'm in. <laughs> uh, so there I was, I decided to ride my bicycle around Southeast Asia for eight months literally off of a whim because it was $625 and that seemed like a good idea. And I, my parents didn't think that that was my best plan, you know, coming from the Vietnam War era, they thought I was, um, you know, you don't really sign up for that. Why do you, we, we, our generation didn't want to go yeah. and here you are, uh, you know, volunteering and, and maybe not doing it in the easiest way possible. So it's a destination. So, I mean, like I'm hearing like, you know, I know we have planners that listen to this call. We probably also have, I'm, I'm, we're going to, you and I know it as uh, being a free spirit, right? And I think you've yes. got, you've got an intense free spirit. Am I right there? Uh, yeah. Freedom and free spirit. Yeah, for sure. Freedom and free spirit. So how far in advance, you said the first step is buy the plane ticket. How far in advance do you typically decide where you're going to go for that particular year? Okay. This is a funny story. This just happened last summer. Uh, I had always wanted to go to Croatia. It was kind of on the list. And 72 hours before I left, I booked a plane ticket, a sailboat, found a captain, and I jumped on a plane 72 hours later. And I was, I literally, I landed. And within four hours, I was sailing around uh, this, the ocean for uh, a week in Croatia with absolutely no plan. The captain said he had never, ever had someone show up by themselves with <laughs> zero plans of what yeah. they wanted to see or where they wanted to go. And I just said, hey, you do this all the time. Let's go. Where do you want to go? What's your favorite spot? Let's let's sail. Let's, let's take us where the winds winds will go. Um, but it's not, it's not always a 72-hour choice, right? Yeah. Uh, but many times it really does just, fall into your lap, you know, just say yes, just buy the plane ticket and, and go for it. Buy the plane ticket. Just say yes. Now, the thing I know about you though, is that there's a time of year. Cause there is some, there is some degree of structure in your life. I know like that you, you have a particular time of year every, every year that you travel and you know, you're going to travel during that time of year. Yeah. What I found uh, and, and I guess everybody's, uh, there's different seasons, different seasons in life, different seasons of the year. Uh, for us in the winter time, it starts to snow. So it's not quite as attractive to be tromping around out there looking at houses. 
And the holidays are a quieter time that people mm -hmm. are not necessarily wanting to show their house and put their house in the market. And so I look forward to, you know, I, I really start I getting start getting itchy in about October. And by Halloween, I'm on a plane going somewhere. Nice. And uh, I stay gone. Uh, you know, again, Thanksgiving, it's just a good time. People have made other plans. Christmas, uh, it's just a, a good time for me to be away from my business. A lot of other folks are, you know, focusing in different areas. And it's, it's a great time that kind of the world slows down, uh, at least in my market and for me. And mm -hmm. it seems like to be an acceptable time to take a vacation um, because everybody's taken going to somebody's house for the holidays. And so my holiday just happens to get expanded to yes. a, a bit longer time frame. Yes. Well, and, and we're going to come back to some of the how because you've put a lot of effort and energy into building a great team so that you can do this stuff. Like you're not just picking up and leaving your clients ha hanging because you know they've got you they've your team has got your back and your clients are going to be served. And that's already kind of been established and planned out. So before we come back to that sort of how, look, can we just do kind of a quick overview of some of your favorite places over the last 10 years? And, and really your whole, I know you've been traveling your whole life. You've been experiencing adventures your whole life, but this sort of three to four months away from your business, this is a 10 year thing. Where, where are some of your favorite places that you've been? Oh, this is always the fun game. People ask me what my favorites are. And, you know, I think there's there's an experience in every country that makes that country my favorite. So yes. every trip, there's there's some authentic experience where I'm really, I, I like to go for, I, I never stay less than a month. You know, really, it would be very rare for me to stay someplace less than a month because you got to get deep. You, you want to get to know the culture and the people and have the opportunity to really uh, not just be a tourist. I don't ever go and stay at the, you know, brand name places because that's just, I might as well stay in the United States if I wanted to have that type of experience. So really being willing to go outside of, of what you know and, and be willing to like uh, have some times where it's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. uh, many, 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 oh, every single country I've ever been to there's a day or a week that I'm like, no wonder people don't travel with me. This is terrible. <laughs> I, maybe I should plan. And and because it doesn't always work out to just be, you know, rainbows and butterflies. Yeah. There's there's some struggle in there too, but you know, it's always darkest before the dawn. So you you really sometimes have your worst experiences uh right before that like special experience. Uh, a, a country that, that really is near and dear in my heart is actually Cuba. Uh, Cuba uh, was a fun adventure. Uh, I snuck in. So I flew to Mexico, took a private plane, just, just took a little jumper plane from Cancun. And uh, upon arrival, I got the shakedown from the, the Cuban government. They looked okay. at every single thing in my backpack. They asked me questions. I had to go in the back and be questioned. And really, I was just a cover so that they could ship it a bunch of like kitchen appliances and blenders and, and kind of funny stuff. I was I was in no danger, but it was it was rather entertaining. Um, but what I liked most about Cuba is truly they're the most resourceful people and the happiest people who really don't have a lot. Um, they've been cut off from most of the rest of the world uh, for a very long time. And man, they, uh, they keep their cars running. They, you know, I saw a guy study this sponge for like 30 minutes before he bought it. Cause this was such an important purchase, mm -hmm. you know, something that we don't even think a second about. And, and they also, they have found uh, joy in, in the simplicity of, of music and dance. Mm -hmm. Everybody plays an instrument. Everybody dances. I, from great grandpa to the babies, you know, they're out there salsa dancing and playing instruments and their instruments are, are like duct taped and, and uh, you know, strings and, and things, things that, uh, you know, the instrument's never going to die and they just, they just keep things going Yes, and, and they found a joy in really the simple things. 
I'm having a, I'm having visions in here. Are you in there dancing and playing and singing? Oh, you know it. You know it. They would give like free salsa dancing lessons, and you know, it turns out with just the right amount of rum, uh, I I can dance. <laughs> um, <laughs> at least I thought I could, uh, but yeah. just, a, just a very warm and and uh, welcoming and um, just just great people that that have really learned to thrive in an environment that many would consider to be uh, pretty pretty difficult. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you mentioned you know, the highlight reel and the, some of the struggles and the uncomfortableness, like talk to me about some of the, some of the struggles you've encountered along the way. (laughs) Oh my goodness. Oh gosh. You know, I, I rode my bike a thousand miles in Spain on the Camino de Santiago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, uh, first day, you know, I've got 30, 40 pounds in my panniers and, I'm, of course, inspired on those first few days, broke off the rear derailleur, had to push it back to the start. I mean, there's definitely a lot of like talking to yourself and talking to yourself that like, you know, I, I'm i I'm strong enough. I can do this, you know, through the tears, through the like, there's generally some some uh, struggles and tears that go along with the, the victories. Uh, I did a motorcycle trip in in New Zealand and literally the first, and I had this baby blue blue, brand new BMW motorcycle. And I'm not kidding you. The first roundabout I went through in Auckland, you know, they go the wrong way for me around the roundabout. So I hesitated just enough, laid the bike down in the middle of the intersection of of the double roundabout and I couldn't pick my motorcycle up. So I'm just, crying standing beside the motorcycle thinking this isn't quite how i thought it was gonna go (laughs) (laughs) i I pushed the bike back to the shop got a little smaller bike and i was scared every day every day literally like people would be you know right on my tail and i like tore off my helmet like i'm a girl be nice to me (laughs) i'm scared on this thing and you know you you have the the sheep poop come up and hit you in the teeth and um i everything from i i ended up uh africa is probably one of the harder places if you're Mm -hmm. gonna do africa plan it don't don't just wing it that's just that's advice from a seasoned traveler go ahead and plan africa because it's uh I'm hearing it, a story coming on. It's it's uh it's tough. So I flew into Mozambique after traveling for almost 60 hours to I flew through South Africa, took a plane to to Maputo, Mozambique, expecting to see those beautiful coastlines, you know, that what I had heard in the stories. Only unfortunately what I found was a very war-torn country with poverty and and you know suffering unlike anything in the rest of the world, really literally like starving children and, and, you know, the things that you're like, how could this still be happening Mm -hmm. in, in a civilized world where we have so much, um, I made a deal, jumped in the back of a pickup truck. Three days later, I had had no food, no water. I ate a tomato and a Coca-Cola for three days and, uh, got to this, this place. Cause that, that it was, in the guidebook that it, it was a UNESCO travel, you know, heritage site. I I get there and unfortunately the guy said, no, you can't stay at this hotel. And I was like, well, I have to stay at this hotel. There's no other place for a little blonde girl like me. Yeah. So I finally, he charges me like $600 a night for a terrible hotel. Um, I get there, there's a lightning and a thunderstorm. All the power goes out. The mosquitoes are biting my eyelids. Um, it's, it's just like, what have I done to myself here? Right. And, and then, uh, as it got darker, I realized maybe why he didn't want me to stay there. They were actually bringing young girls in and uh, it was a sex slave hotel. Oh my gosh. And so I realized I was in quite a bit of danger. I had to tie myself into my room with my cell phone cord and a little padlock from my luggage. Wow. And and the owner of the hotel tried to get into my room in the in the night. And I just laid there in a little mosquito net and all my clothes and something covering my face until the sun came up and then made a run for it. And uh 
had to just take whatever ride I could get. I got stopped with guys with machine guns and just went to the nearest airport. I, I literally, I still don't know what airport it was. And I ended up flying into several countries that I still don't know where I was. Yeah. And uh, I finally ended up uh, in Tanzania and had a, had an amazing time camping in the, in the Serengeti and, and, ended up, you know, again, one of those things where the elephants were pooping right outside my tent and I could hear the lion's roar <laughs> and right? I felt safer than I did. You in felt the, safer. You know. I know. Like I, I felt this like feeling of like uh, safety come over me as soon as you said Tanzania, cause I've been there and I'm like, okay, now I'm feeling safer for you, but I'm almost feeling like, oh my goodness, this is like, um, this is going to be an episode on why not to follow the voice that calls you to adventure. It's true. It's true. I was like, I don't want to tell my mom these stories. I hope she's yeah. not listening. But, yeah. uh, you know, it's just, again, um, my, my grandfather gave me the best advice, which was walk tall and carry a big stick. And wherever <laughs> I am, I, I have that, you know, I don't have a big stick, but I yeah. envision that in my mind that I'm like, hey, I'm walking tall I, I am not to be messed with. And, you know, uh, it's amazing how you really can carry yourself in a way. I love it. Everybody's not going to be called to that kind of adventure. And honestly, if I had to do it over again, I might do a few steps different. <laughs> uh, but uh, it was it was certainly an adventure of a lifetime. I love it. Oh, my gosh. Um, all right. I'm going to pause for one second and come back because I think my um, family behind me doesn't realize that I'm recording and I, can you hear them? Nope. Okay. Hang on one second. This is the good thing about not doing a live recording. Right. I don't think they realize that like this microphone picks up everything. So that's the good thing about wearing headphones because I can hear that. So Ryan will, Ryan will cut all that out, but I'm going to just jump right back in here um, because Michelle, like listening to your story, like a bunch of words kind of popped in my mind. Like I'm, I'm obviously talking to somebody that um, has a very high threshold for, I'm not going to say no fear, but a very high threshold for, um, for, you know, pushing through fear, somebody with courage somebody with resilience and somebody with an incredible amount of resourcefulness. And I'm curious, like in all of these adventures that you've taken, like what, so first of all, where did all, like, would you agree with those words in, in terms of like how they describe you? You know, in the moment of fear, it's still fear. I'm still scared. There's not a, there's, there's nobody that I think could go through those experiences. Um, but yeah, you do. You realize this too shall pass. You know, our, our brilliant friend, Brian Buffini, gave us those words of advice. Yes. And, and it really is, you know, learning to, um, a lot of it is, is breathing. I, I practice yes. some meditation and sometimes you just have to go to a different place. You, you, you really, in your mind, can't buy into everything that's going on because you know this this is sometimes a life and death situation. Yeah. Not everybody goes on holiday like that. Uh, my holiday is a little more like Survivor, um, but um, you know, you you really do, uh, you know. And and also tuning in. My gut is right. My intuition is right. I listen to that both in the fun part as well as the dangerous parts to say. Ooh, is this feeling how checking in with myself? How does this feel? And, mm -hmm. and what do I need to be aware of? Um, I always say, you know, with awareness, I'm doing this with awareness. I'm paying attention. I'm paying attention to everything. I don't ever, I, I don't allow myself to get necessarily caught up in just the good time. I'm constantly, because I'm by myself, I've done yes. all my travels uh, by myself. Yep. And yep. so, I'm constantly aware of my surroundings where, and I, and I have, uh, I have kind of plans. I have money belts in like four different places. I've got things stashed. I've learned, you know, where to hide things in the liner of the garbage can, uh, because nobody checks the liners of the garbage can. 
um, behind pictures at your hotel, you know, like I constantly have my plan, my backup plan, and then one more plan behind that yeah. of how I'm going to get out of the situation if I need to. I knew you were a planner. <laughs> I'm getting like a James Bond vibe right now, by the way. <laughs> So I love it. But, you know, you do this willingly. I mean, you go on these trips and you know you're going to get put in. Um, you're going to have a blast. And sometimes there's going to be like these compromising situations like the one that I mean, that's a pretty extreme situation that you talked about in Africa. But like, you know, I, I'm not going to say that you seek this out, but like, you know, these things are going to happen. You know, I kind of do seek it out. I uh, I've found that I, I love adrenaline and adventure. And if I don't find my best outlet for that, I'm going to create it in my own life. Mm. And so instead of creating that kind of, you know, dragging people through my adventure uh, spirit, if I could have an outlet that is my travel, that, that gets my yayas off in a healthier way, uh, it creates less drama, stress, and dragging people on an adventure in, in life. Uh, you know, somebody kind of, my coach actually said, you know, you like drag three people through a, a landmine, a field full of landmines, you know where they are, but they don't. And they think they're just going on this like terrible adventure, this scary thing when, you know, I've already anticipated these things. Yeah. When I go on a trip, I prepare my bags. I am ready. I am ready to survive in the wilderness. I am ready to go through, you know, medical things. And, and so uh, my, my pack is, it's light, but it's full of necessities mm -hmm. of, of things that, you know, you've got to have the, the water purification tablets. You've got to have some certain types of medication. You know, it, there, there are many things before the journey that ensure that hopefully I never have to use those things, right. but my bag typically has the survival kit in it for just about any circumstance. Yeah. So can you talk about sort of the learning? Cause I, you know, again, as a free spirit, like I'm imagining, like you kind of learn these things by experience. Like, can we go back sort of to the beginning, like, and, and talk through sort of the development of how some of that learning came about? I mean, the very first trip you went on, you probably didn't pack your bag with absolutely everything you needed. That is so, well, actually the first, first few trips I went on, I would overpack okay. and I was that, like that girl, like that was like the turtle that was going to get stuck <laughs> on her, uh, you know, on her back with her massive backpack yeah. because I, I brought, you know, the kitchen sink with me. Um, and then, you know, you do you, each trip where you, I ended up eating some really bad, uh, what I thought was beef noodle soup. It ended up to be rat soup in, wow. in Vietnam. And the, the rat and I didn't really digest all that well. So yeah. I ended up in the hospital in Vietnam for a week that I really don't remember much of. Um, I was really excited when they told me I was going to live. Um, and uh, so, yeah, it's just, it less is more. Um, I have a packing list and I stick to it. And, and you don't need more than two pairs of shorts and two shirts and one pair of tennis shoes. You, you don't need the things you think you need. Yeah. Um, you know, just the, the more simple you can pack and travel, the, the easier it's going to be because then it's not a struggle every time you want to change directions or you're moving about. Um, you know, the stuff you bring with you I always say anything that's in my bag, you have to be willing to give it up. The only thing I'm not willing to give up is my passport. <laughs> hey, Maybe go. like one credit card. And uh, I always put 20 bucks in my, in my passport. Yeah. And so like that 20 bucks has gotten me out of more trouble in more countries. Uh, just like pass it off. Here's my passport. Here's an extra 20, a hundred bucks. And they think that you're, uh, you're too wealthy. And so they're going to keep going, but never expect anything that you're not willing to leave behind. Mm -hmm. um, there's nothing of value, my safety, hopefully my passport, these are the things that are the only thing I really care if I lose it or somebody takes it. And, you know, I, I, I definitely have been in a few situations where I'm like, I'm leaving that backpack behind and I'm running. <laughs> wow. wow. 
Where I, I want to go back to like where this kind of started for you, this sort of adventure life and the adventure mindset, like could take us back to, to little, the years of little Michelle, like how, how did, how did this all come about? I, you know, I, I, my mom would tell you, I like, I was just a daredevil and I, I think I came out with a little bit of fire in me. So I've, <laughs> I've been pretty adventurous and, and pretty social. We'd go camping as kids and I'd like make friends with the whole campground before the end of the week. I'd know where everybody was from and what kid went on what camp. And, and so I think just that ability to build rapport mm -hmm. and, and have, uh, no fear in, in uh, being showing up, just being authentic. Hi, I'm little Michelle. I'm from Lebanon, Oregon. It's nice to meet you. And, and a, a smile uh, and, a, and, a, and a trust in the good of people has, has really done me such a great service all over the world. Yes. Yeah. I really believe in the kindness and, and the good in people. And of course, there's there's times where, um, for whatever reason, people have their circumstances, and and uh, so there's there's exceptions. But for the most part, people are good and people are nice. And if you treat them respectfully, they will also treat you respectfully. Yeah. Um, I started off at the first time that I got to leave my little town of Lebanon, Oregon, and go out of the country. I had the opportunity to play tennis for the United States. And my mom was out there and we did car washes and we collected cans and we did fundraisers to, to enable me to be able to uh, earn the money to, to go on a trip like this and, and get to play tennis all over Europe. And uh, I just saw a, a bigger picture of the world, mm -hmm. you know, a, a perspective that I had never seen in my little town, different ways of doing things, just even a, a British accent. Um, and and diversity that that I wasn't exposed to until you know really seeing a, a different way of life and and I caught the bug and that was no no turning back from there you know it's yeah. my mom had no idea the damage she did on that one trip <laughs> sending me well, one, one thing I heard you say that I really I really liked is you know you just have this kind of belief in the kindness of of humans in general. And I'm, you know, the, the courage that you bring to these trips, um, it seems like it's kind of based on this belief in like the open heartedness. It, it's, it, is that, is that fair? Is that? Oh, uh, absolutely. You know, and it's, it's really what I, I, I hope that everybody gets a chance when we're stripped away from all of our comforts, you know, we, we get comfortable in our little boxes, in our mm -hmm. homes, with our friends, with things being the same every day. But when that's all taken away and, and you're stripped of like any familiarity that you could ever have, and it's just you, you, you really break it down to what is your authentic self. You know, mm -hmm. what, what do you do when nobody knows you? nobody's watching. You don't know a single soul. You don't know. You've never seen anything that you're experiencing. You know, when I arrived in Vietnam, it really felt like somebody, you know, took me on a spaceship and dropped me off on a like alien planet because yeah. there was nothing like it that I had ever experienced before. The smells, I mean, the streets of Saigon, mm -hmm. yeah. it's like, garbage and toilets and armpits mixed in yeah. mixed into like yeah. one little soup of, of <laughs> smells and and so what do you do in those situations you know how do you how do you bring about your courage and i actually find that it's my bravest moments it's my strongest moments i come home like on fire like i can do anything I am motivated to get back to the career that I've chosen. I, I, I want to just share that like fire that's inside that comes from, you know, kind of stripping away the, the comforts and the, the everyday box that we live in. Yes. I love that, 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 that stripping away and that, that point about the fire inside, you know, it, it seems like having this conversation, I mean, you just seem like somebody that's just not afraid of anything. Michelle, does anything scare you? 
Yes, I recently flew over the handlebars of my mountain bike and the flying was okay, but I'm really scared of the landing now. So, uh, so now I think land flying good, uh, landing not so good. Landing, uh, landing. But yes, I, I have I have fears, but it's like we all have fears. Anybody that is going to do this and live this life, but I like to switch it around. And and when I'm scared, I like to say I'm excited. I'm I excited. Love that. I know? love that. Wasn't well, there something we've we've learned that like your body, like the the same thing that registers like anxiety is the is it's the same mechanisms that register excitement, right? Yeah. So you just kind of flip it in your brain. Yeah, I love yeah. it. And you do that. You do that magically. Probably better than anybody I know. So I I do know like when in one of the original conversations that we had, um, you didn't always have the confidence that you could go do this sort of thing. Like I remember you talking about sort of you know a moment or a period when you know you kind of decided, like you said, you made that decision. Like yes, I can do this. And I'm just wondering because you know I think people are going to listen to you and just think, man, she does have no fear. Like she just gets after it. Like I couldn't do that. And I feel like you were there at one point. Could you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I can actually, I can remember this moment where my dad told me it was time to get my heads out of the cloud and come down into reality. And I was like, oh, oh God, what does that look like? All right. So I I decided to button myself down and, and you know, really put my my heart and soul and I, I got into real estate and... Yep. I decided that, you know, I was 30. So darn it, it was about time that I should get married. And uh, so I tried that out. Um, and then uh, we had this little market crash. I don't know if you guys all remember that. Oh, yeah. Oh, 2007, yeah. Yep. Where I had kind of bought into this keeping up with the Joneses. Mm -hmm. And and I was married and I was trying to, I, I bought a bunch of real estate and I overextended myself. I thought I didn't, but I was living, um, I was living a, honestly a lie. I wasn't, I was, if I traveled, it was just like a nicer trip. And I, I got caught into a, a life that I didn't recognize as my own anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And uh that ended in a very painful divorce. That was probably one of the lowest moments of my life where I was on my knees in the shower, wondering if I was going to make it through. And, and, you know, I, I lost everything. I, I, I didn't even know who I was anymore. Yeah. And, um, it's, it's kind of awesome. That was actually, uh, the, the trip after that was the thousand, mile bike ride in Spain. Yeah. Um, and it took everything in me to get through that. That still is one of the harder experiences of my life because I was emotionally um, in a rough spot as well as doing one of the hardest physical things I had ever done as well. And, and in the snow and in the cold and the Pyrenees mountains and, you know, I couldn't feel my feet for hours at a time. But, but through those hard experiences on the other side of it, you realize just how strong you are and, and, uh, you know, kind of going through some, some great seminars. I, I remember, you know, kind of getting back to like, okay, I, I want to do this again, but I feel like I can't anymore. I'm, I'm not, I'm not in a position, you know, I'm stuck now. I'm, I, that was a different life and, and I may never get to, uh, feel that kind of alive again. And yeah, I get it. Other people did it. I used to do it, but I'm, I, I don't know if I can get there again. And, and I can remember thinking of, of one of our friends that Scott and I know, and, you know, he had done investment properties and he had built this team and I thought, well, yeah, that's all fine and dandy, but you know, that's just not my reality. I can't do that. And, the more you spend time with people that do it, yes, it helps you see a path that it is possible, yes. that you can be that person. And it's it's so strange to me now to be in the position where I'm trying to help other people see that because I've been in the seat where I can't do that. That's not my life. That's somebody else's reality. There's no way that, that I could ever take that kind of time off. They don't know my business. They don't know my life. But it turns out, you know, 
you actually can get in that position. And, and maybe I'm jumping ahead here, but I think that part of it is letting down the ego that says, I'm the only one that can do it. Yep. I, the way I do it is better than anybody else. Yep. It turns out it's not. It, it turns out that you can delegate. It turns out that, that you know, I'm not saving lives out here. I'm, I'm just helping people with their real estate. And that I've got this team where they're even more talented than I could have ever been. And if I'm not recharging my batteries and showing up as my best self, people are going to feel that too. And instead people feel the like joy and they're like, I'm on fire for life. And they want to be around people like that. And so it's actually a charge to my business to go away, take care of myself, do the things I love so that I can come back. And, you know, now I do client parties and theme it with whatever country I just went to. So I came back from Croatia and I brought yeah. some wines and I, I, I threw a party and it was all Croatian themed. And, and so, you know, really finding ways that you can do it. It does not come at the cost of the business. As a matter of fact, it increases and, and, you know, people can tell when you're fired up and in love with your life and they want more of that and they want to be around you and do business with you and be friends with you because you give off a, a different energy than someone who's burned out, doesn't really believe in their, their, their fire anymore. Yes. I love that. This is, this is amazing because like people think they need to go get away you know, just to kind of recharge themselves. But like what we sometimes fail to realize is it's actually making us better for others. And so what you're, you're talking about here is like by doing this for yourself, by doing this thing that you love, you're actually coming back with more fire, with more energy, and it's actually helping the people around you and your business to be better. And here's the cool thing. Like you talked about surrounding yourself with, with people that are doing it and that's what you did to get there. And now you're the piece, you're the person that people want to sur be surrounded by so that they can go do the kinds of things that you're doing. And that's just so cool. You followed your heart. You listen to the voice that calls you to adventure. You do it every year. And it's just a huge inspiration. I love it so much, Michelle. Like, so for people that are listening that um, are inspired by your story, that, that love this energy, that love, you know, the infectious energy that you bring, but maybe are back there in that place where you were saying, I can't do that. You know, this, 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 uh, adventure lifestyle that this Michelle person is living, that's all well and good, but I can't do that. You said that. What advice do you have for those people having been in their shoes? <laughs> I'm going to go back to my original, just buy the plane ticket. Yeah, buy the plane ticket. <laughs> buy the plane ticket. Book it. What's something that you've dreamed of? And yeah. and if you're a planner, buy it for next year. Buy it for whatever yeah. whatever timeline that you think you need as an yeah. individual. But like, what what is it that like fires you up inside? That like, just saying the name of the place gets it so that you got butterflies and your heart starts beating a little faster. Where where is it? What have you always dreamed of? Just do it. Book it, and then you'll put the things in place you'll make the sacrifices that it takes to get there because you, you've you planned it. You've got the, you got the plane ticket. You got you to got do the it. plane ticket. So just book the plane ticket. That's, wow. That really is what will move the dial from, oh, I'd like to do that to, oh, I'm going. I got a plane ticket. I'm on my way to Greece or yep. I'm on my way to, you know, again, whatever that is and wherever that is. There's no, nobody has the answer to Shangri-La. That is what's inside you. And it, it, it could be a camping trip to Yosemite. It's, there's a thousand different destinations that are, that are what you need inside you that just like, pushes you outside of the comfort zone of every day into like a dream that you never thought possible. Yeah. I love it. Okay. So a uh, couple more fun questions before that though, I want to know, um, do you know where you're going this year? 
Well, Scott, we talked about this a little bit. And uh, for the first time, there is one little magic spot for me uh, that's always been uh, something special to my heart. I love the Hawaiian Islands. I used to live on a sailboat in Oahu. And, and it just, the energy in Hawaii is something, uh, the aloha spirit, it's real, it's alive. Uh, so I bought an investment property uh, and one of them is, is uh, a personal home there. And so I've been spending more time in Maui and, and I kind of love it. it. It slowed down the like, you know, not going to Africa, but I'm just so thrilled to be growing banana trees and picking papayas and, you know, kind of creating a, um, another beautiful life of, of something that I've, I've been trying to figure out a way to buy property in Maui for 10 solid years. I've mm -hmm. been like stalking the real estate market in Maui. So um, that's, that's a, a new chapter and a new adventure that is not maybe quite as exciting as, as uh, you know, some of the places that I've been to, but it definitely feeds me in a different way. Yeah. And so that's, that's a new kind of chapter in my life and something that uh, I look forward to. And so the next, the next stop is, is Maui. Uh, I hope you guys are going to come soon. I, and, I love uh, it. And I, I just have to say, cause it's such a, like, you know, being in the real estate business as well, like just seeing you take a couple of different passions, like re, like real estate as an investment and your love of adventure and being able to marry those two um, through investment, which, you know, a lot of people, you know, think, oh, you know, well, the person just, you know, buys this investment property and that's great. They're going to go spend all their time in Hawaii. But like this is actually an investment, an income producing property for you that, you know, something that you've been working at for a long time. And it's it's super inspiring. And then to do it in such a beautiful place as Hawaii, it just it's like the extra punch. It's just, it's, it's so inspiring. And I'm like, it's yet another reason why you're somebody that I want to surround myself with. I love it. Oh, well, I think highly of both you and Maria. I'm so <laughs> grateful to know you and really it's, it's such a pleasure surround yourself with people that you want to be like, and, you know, you can do anything. It's, it's pretty amazing. Um, the people we spend time with and, and how much that influences our lives. So speaking of people that we spend time with, you know, I want to know, because Hollywood's going to make a movie about you at some point, all of these adventures, you know, my gosh, like you told some stories today that, you know, they might have to be a horror film. I don't know, or a, a psychological thriller. I, I'm not sure, but I want to know when they tell the story of your life in Hollywood, who's going to be the actress that's going to play you? Oh, I love this. I love this. I have two favorite actresses. It's Cameron Diaz or Uma Thurman. Oh my and, gosh, and both of those. Yes. Both of those, either one. I, yes. I'd, uh, you know, I'd allow either, either of those fabulous leading ladies, but I just think they've got a great sense of humor, a little bit of quirkiness. Uh, and, uh, I, I think they're, they're beautiful ladies that, uh, I, I would love to see, uh, those, oh, those, man. those ladies as, as the leading role. And I'm hoping that maybe Matthew McConaughey can play my husband. Nice. You know, <laughs> you know, I like that could really work out. <laughs> I love that. I love both of those actresses that great picks. Those are awesome for you. Um, and so what's your movie going to be called? Oh, if you're not living on the edge, you're taking up too much space. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. All right. Starring, we have, we're still deciding either Cameron Diaz or Uma Thurman. This is perfect. I love it. Well, Michelle, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your incredible story with us. For those listening, I hope you've been inspired today as much as I have. I hope that Michelle's story has encouraged you to listen to the voice inside that calls you to adventure because we want to hear your story next. If you have a story to tell or you need a nudge to create one, please send me an email. We'd also appreciate it if you'd help us spread the word by leaving a review and sharing or tagging Inspire Campfire in your social media. And until next time, I want to encourage you to get outside. Thank you for listening. Michelle, thank you so much for being here today. Oh, thank you. It was really fun talking with you.